Hi, my name is Dr. Tamara Thompson, and I will be presenting along with Shelly Ann Johnson, LCSW, Mental Health 101. Next slide. Part one will be fundamentals of mental health, and part two will be mental health self-care. Next slide. There is no health without mental health. This statement from the World Health Organization emphasizes how mental health involves everybody. Mental health, the way we think or feel about ourselves and what is going on around us and how we cope with the stresses of life affects our sense of well-being as well as our physical health. In this sense, everyone has mental health and good mental health is vital for learning in life. Within the realm of mental health, there are three spheres. We have biological, social, and psychological. One is never affected without the other. In our biological sphere, we have physical health, disability, and genetic vulnerabilities. Moving to the social sphere, we have peers, family circumstances, and school. And in the psychological sphere, we have self-esteem, coping skills, and social skills. If you pay close attention, you'll see where there are some overlaps between the three. Drug effects fall between social and biological, family relationships and trauma fall between social and psychological, and temperament and IQ fall between biological and psychological. Again, there is no health without mental health. And if we rock the atmosphere in any one of the three spheres, it can shake our quake, our mental health. Next slide, please. Knowing that we all have mental health, we'll briefly talk about characteristics of good mental health. These are things such as using I messages, being an active listener, using health skills such as stress management and conflict resolution, being optimistic and expressing emotions in healthy ways. You're able to meet the demands of life, feel good about yourself and feel comfortable with other people. Next slide. On the back side of that coin, we can see that we have characteristics of poor mental health, meaning emotions control behaviors, can be very pessimistic, cannot accept change, let stress control life, doesn't share personal feelings or have personal connections, aggressive and passive, close-minded and tends to use you messages and blames others and lets situations escalate. Next slide, please. So now that we all know we all have mental health, we don't all have a mental illness. So what is a mental illness and what's the difference between the two? Mental illness is a pattern of thinking or behaviors that causes a person significant emotional pain or prevents normal functioning. An illness is a disease or period of the sickness affecting the body or the mind. Next slide. There are four major causes of mental illness. The first one is inherited traits, which falls in that biological sphere, environmental exposures before birth, such as exposure to toxins, viruses, alcohol, or drugs, negative life experiences, also known as trauma, and brain chemistry, hormonal imbalances, such as an imbalance in our serotonin. serotonin. Next slide, please. There are also a lot of myths about mental illness. People with mental illnesses are dangerous or violent. They can't be trusted around children. They're caused by a personal weakness or people with a mental illness are poor and or less intelligent. That couldn't be farther from the truth. Mental health problems are very common. About one out of every five people will experience a mental health issue in any given year. One of every 25 has a serious mental health disorder. These include anxiety, major depression, bipolar disorder, 
and even schizophrenia. Only about 7% of violent acts are committed by a person with symptoms of mental illness. In fact, people with serious mental health issues are 10 times more likely to be a victim of violence. Also know that mental health doesn't stay the same, which is common with a myth that's out there. It goes up and down over the course of our lives. Many factors can influence how we feel. And if any of these factors change, our mental health could change as well. Next slide. We'll take a quick moment and do an exercise called optical illusions. Same picture, different view. I'll give you five seconds to look at each slide and tell me what you see first. Slide number one, do you see a white columns or do you see a male, two males facing each other? Next slide. Which word do you see first? Do you see good or evil? Next slide. Do you see two people facing each other or do you see a vase? Next slide, please. Mental health is like an optical illusion. Often the outer appearance does not reflect the true person, which results in stigma, bias, and discrimination. And that is why so many individuals do not seek help. Next slide, please. Women's stress and mental health. Women's mental health is an important element in one's overall well being and contentedness as it maintains cognitive alternates, emotional sanity, balance of self, lives, and relationships. When one is mentally balanced and at peace with themselves internally, they're practicing very good mental health. Recent studies have shown that women are beginning to report more frequent and more severe symptoms of anxiety and depression. Also, when compared to men, women's symptoms have gotten worse over time. Women are more likely than men to report symptoms of stress, including headaches and upset stomach. Women are also more likely to have mental health conditions that are made worse by stress, again, such as depression or anxiety. We know that stress occurs when an event or stimulus requires us to change in some way. Stress is, stress is our brain's way of saying, I know I have to change, but I don't like to have, but I don't have to like it. Stress involves an imbalance between what is demanded of us and what we are able to cope with or respond to. Next slide. Stress, anxiety, and depression are a triad that many people experience in 2022. Anxiety is a general term for several disorders that cause nervousness, fear, apprehension, and worrying. Someone experiencing anxiety may suffer from panic attacks and fear in high stress events. The last couple of years have been filled with stress due to COVID, economics, civil unrest, and injustices. Next slide, please. Depression is an emotional disorder primarily involving sadness, dependency, and depression. Some signs and symptoms of depression include dejection, hopelessness, inability to feel pleasure or take interest. And when this happens, medical attention is needed. We can't just snap out of, of depression. Snapping out of depression is just as likely as snapping out of a heart attack. It is impossible to do. Next slide, please. Again, some signs and symptoms of depression include withdrawal from family and friends, dropping grades or work performance, change in eating and sleeping patterns, large weight gain or loss, unresolved grief over a loss, substance use, 
or difficulty concentrating, remembering, or making decisions, irritable or angry outburst. Next slide, please. For the clinical self, a clinical pearl that you can remember is self-care is essential to the soul. Self-care is care provided for you by you. It's about identifying your own needs and taking steps to meet them. It is taking the time to do some of the activities that nurture you. Self-care is about taking proper care of yourself and treating yourself as kindly as you treat others. Now we'll move on to part two of the presentation. All right, everyone, welcome to part two of Mental Health 101. My name is Shelly Ann Johnson. I'm a licensed clinical social worker in private practice here in the state of Georgia. Um, the main focus of my work is in perinatal care and um, so new and expected moms and trauma. I also work with mental health facilities dealing with people in the height of their mental health crises. So these circumstances obviously inherently come with stress and anxiety. Um, I don't want you guys to think that stress and anxiety is something that is um, terrible, right? It's normal. It's normal. We all experience stress. We all experience anxiety. It's our systems way of letting us know like, hey, something is wrong. It's building some kind of awareness. The issue comes up when it starts to interfere with our everyday functioning, when we can't leave the house because we're so anxious, when we can't speak in a crowd because it's just so stressful for us. And these symptoms also can show up somatically, right? So they can show up physically in our bodies like uh, headaches, inflammation, and other illnesses. So I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about some practical things you can do. Times when you start to feel so stressed out and so anxious, you're even having panic attacks to where you can't function. Um, I'm gonna give you some, some tools, some things that I've used successfully in my practice um, that have been very effective at helping my clients with the symptoms of stress and anxiety. So here we go. Um, people often say, exercise, eat right, you know, this will help your stress and your anxiety, your depression, right? And that's good advice. But sometimes we're so deep in the throes of our mental health issue, whether it's anxiety or stress, that we can't. We're so depressed, we can't get out of bed to exercise. We don't have the time because our jobs are so stressful, right? So what are some things that you can do that are practical that you can use to manage your daily stress and your daily anxiety. Um, so I'll give you a few examples and then I'm gonna lead you guys actually in a couple of exercises um, that you can do by yourself. You don't need a therapist or um, anyone to do these, okay? So here we go. First thing you can do when you are feeling anxious is changing your environment. So you're in your bedroom, you're stressed out about all the things you have to do with work, your mind is going a mile a minute, and you're, in, you're about to have a full-on panic attack. Go to the living room, change your environment, go outside, get some fresh air, get some vitamin D. Just being in a different environment will break up the monotony of what you're feeling, and it'll break up those symptoms of anxiety and stress. And while we're on the subject of um, going outside, uh, something that I love to do, something that I encourage all my patients to do is earthing. So simply put, earthing is reconnecting your body, the human body to the earth's surface, to the earth's electrons. We're so disconnected now with our shoes, we're, we're on concrete, so we're not connected to the natural electrons. And we're, we're an electrical system, right? We have energy and all electrical systems are stabilized and they're grounded by the earth. And so you just simply going outside, putting your feet in the dirt, putting your feet in some grass actually balances the cortisol in your, cortisol in your body. It's being linked to better sleep. Um, it reduces stress. It relieves pain, um, anxiety, depression, irritability. It can also actually effectively reduce inflammation in the body. So just going outside and putting your feet in some grass is an amazing stress relief and um, is very good for you. Tons of studies on earthing. So you guys can um, check that out on, on your own time as well. Um, 
And something that Dr. Thompson actually talked about a little bit is I statements. So another thing you can do is practicing a little bit of self-compassion. Sometimes we're so mean to ourselves when those parts of us come up that are anxious, that are saying, hey, Shelly Ann, I'm nervous. Your body is trying to tell you something. Your mind is doing its job. It's saying, hey, something is wrong here. And we're just like, get away from me. I don't want to hear you. You know, you're, you're making me uncomfortable. And anxiety is uncomfortable. But instead, practice a little self-compassion. Say, hey, I hear you. I know you're scared. And give yourself a little bit of love. Sometimes we're the meanest people to ourselves. Um, my rule of thumb is if you wouldn't say it to someone you love, then don't say it to yourself. It's more often than not, you're actually hurting yourself. Um, let's see, the next thing that we can do, so this is a little bit of self-love, hug yourself. <laughs> uh, next thing that we can do is active meditation. So I know that sounds kind of counterintuitive, right? So I'm gonna give you a little example of how this works. So a lot of times when we try to meditate, at least I know this was something for me, um, it was hard to shut my mind off, to even give myself the five minutes I needed to actually meditate. Um, so some of us, when we say meditate, they're like, um, I, Shelly and I can't, like my mind is just too active. So with active meditation, it's kind of like a, you know, in between. So uh, the way you do this is you, after work, your day is done, you've decided, okay, I need to relax, but your mind is still going. Go to a place where you can actually have some alone time, some silence, right? And then you can turn on some music, rain sounds, white noise, whatever kind of calms you down. Um, and just put that on, have a pen and paper handy right next to you. And then write down everything that comes to your mind, whether it's work-related, whether it's about your private life, um, your to-do list, whatever is coming to your mind. It doesn't have to be a long dissertation either. You can just make bullet points. Um, and what that does is it clears your mind of it because your mind really is just trying to help you. It's like, oh, Shelly Ann, don't forget to do this. Um, it doesn't want you to forget. So when you put it on this piece of paper, it's telling yourself, okay, I have it on this paper. It's safe. It's not anywhere you're not going to get to that stuff until tomorrow anyways so this will give yourself permission to kind of relax for the night and tell yourself that like hey it's safe it's on this paper i'm not going to forget about it but right now i need to relax and believe it or not guys it actually works it's pretty effective um, at getting your mind to just kind of calm down so um, now that we've kind of gotten that out of the way so changing your environment um, earthing, practicing self-compassion, and um, active meditation, I am now going to lead you in a couple of exercises. These are ones that have been super helpful to my clients and to myself, actually, um, and they're easy to do. So I picked these because of stuff that you can do on your own at any time. All right, so if you would join me um, if you're comfortable with closing your eyes, you can do so. If not, it's totally fine. Um, but the first thing is deep breathing. So when you're stressed out, when you're anxious, what that is, is just your body is heightened. You're in a heightened sense of alert. Um, so you're almost in fight or flight. For some of us, even if you're having a panic attack, that is what it is. You're in fight or flight. So your nervous system is alerted. So what you need to do is calm it down. And the way you do that is by breathing. And I know it sounds easy, but sometimes we forget to breathe, especially when we're actually having a panic attack or when we're scared. So you just sit with yourself for a moment and you can do this. It, you don't have to have a special set uh, time set aside for this. You can do this at any point. Any point you start to feel any type of uh, anxiety or stress. So you just take a deep breath in and you hold it for a count. So you go one, two, three, four, you breathe in for four and breathe out slowly for five, two, three, four, five. Again, breathe in for four, three, four. You breathe out slowly for five. One, two, three, four, five. 
Again, breathe in slowly for four. One, two, three, four. And you breathe out slowly for five. One, two, four, five. Okay, and what you're doing is you're telling your nervous system, I want you to calm down. And this is biology, guys. It automatically calms you down. So it's nothing special that you have to do. Um, the only thing that you have to do is just remember to breathe. Breath is life. So once you, you take your deep breaths in, slowly breathe out for a count. And it, does, it can be longer than four, whatever you need. If it's five, if it's six, but just make sure when you breathe out slowly, you just do it for one more count. So if you're breathing in for four, you breathe out for five, et cetera. You breathe in for five, you breathe out for six, all right? Um, and while you're doing this exercise too, just kind of imagine relaxing parts of your body that seem to be holding tension. So our face carries a lot of tension. So if you're feeling that um, tension in your face, just you know, relax your jaw, relax your eyebrows, these places in our body that we don't even think are holding tension, but they are. So that is one deep breathing, super, super effective. It's very, very powerful. The breath is life. That's where all life begins. All right. So the next thing that I love, love, love to do is um, energy work. So it's about um, bringing good energy into your body and letting go of the tension and anxiety and stress that be holding in our bodies. Um, we talked a little bit about somatic experiencing, right? So experiencing things in our body um, where parts of us are holding things. So whether we're holding sadness, we're holding anxiety, we're holding stress. So this exercise is super effective with actually letting go of these things. And it helps with the somatic um with the somatic experiencing that we get when we hold on to things in our body because it's energy like anything else if you're holding it it doesn't go anywhere and it will manifest it will show up in your body in different ways and that's where we get panic attacks and anxiety all right so um if you guys are with me one more time um we're gonna go ahead and close our eyes if you're comfortable to do so all right we're gonna take a deep breath in and just blow it out and try to relax as best you can. Now, in your mind's eye, we're gonna do a little bit of um, using our imagination here, all right? I want you to envision a bright, beautiful light coming from the sun. Whether that light is green, blue, yellow, whatever healing color um, is manifesting for you. For me, it's always this beautiful yellow light, whatever is comforting and comforting to you um, and comfortable to you. So go ahead and um, envision this light as we breathe in. So we're breathing in this beautiful healing light from the sun. And just imagine this energy is filling up your head and we're breathing out any negativity, any doubt, any anxiety. We breathe in again, this healing light and now it's filled our neck and our shoulders are glowing with this healing light. We breathe out any stress, any tension we're holding in our shoulders, any pain, any depression, any sadness. We're breathing in healing energy and now it's filling up our chest and our back and our torso is filled with this healing light. We breathe out any doubt, any negativity, any stress, any anxiety. Once again, we breathe in our healing light. It's filled up our arms and our fingertips, breathing out any stress and tension that is holding. We're so calm now. As we breathe in this healing light, it's filling up our pelvic area. We hold so much stress there. Just let it go. As you breathe out, you release the tension you're holding there. You release any anxiety, any pain, any doubt. Breathe in once again, healing beautiful light as it covers your thighs and your knees. And you're breathing out any tension, any anxiety, any stress that you're holding. Breathe in again, healing beautiful light. And now it's filled up your legs and your feet all the way to your toes. And you breathe out any negativity, any doubt, stress, or anxiety. We're gonna do this 
once more as we breathe in this healing light. Now feel our body is glowing. We feel so much lighter because now we have this positive energy inside of us, this healing light. We blow out any remaining negativity, any negative doubts, anything that's persisting in our bodies. And we sit in this healing. We sit in this moment of peace, knowing that we can only control what we can control. Whatever is left, we just have to let it go. Our worry is not gonna change it. All we can change is us and how we react. All right, and when you are ready, you can open your eyes. Come back to this beautiful space that we're sharing. And um, I'm gonna leave actually my um, contact information here on this last slide. If you guys have any questions, if you need to reach me, if you need any additional resources or tips on stress management, um, I'll be more than happy to share what I know because I love, 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 love giving this information. So thank you so much for having me guys.